let's start to look ahead to Ali Pali, the PDC World Championships, just over a, a week away now. And the defending champion, Michael Smith, will be in action on that opening night against Kevin Duets or Stowe Bunt. But how far will Bully Boy go in his title defence? It really depends uh, which Michael Smith shows up for this event, because it's hard to guess which one's going to show up. You know, if you look at the players' championship events as of late, he's had some decent performances. He Nothing that I would say is great, but overall, he's played above his season average over the last three months as often as he's played below it. And he's had a few matches, you know, 102 against Vincent Vandervoort, 100 against Keen Berry, 100 against Christian Kist, 103 consecutive matches, uh, Players Championship 22. You know, he's had a lot of these ton plus matches, but he's also had matches where he's averaged in the low 80s. And then in the Players Championship final last week, he averaged mid 80s and going out in his first match. So a lot of it depends on which Michael Smith shows up because any Michael Smith could show up right now. There's been no consistency in his game. I've been saying all along that he's learning how to be number one, how to have that target on his back. And I think at some point in the middle of the season, it looked like he had it figured out. But his confidence just seems to be a little not there. And if he finds himself in trouble early in a match, I don't know if right now I back him to dig himself out. And that's the scary part, because whoever he gets in that first match, whether it's Kevin Doitz, whether it's Stobunz, they are a player that can wheel off three legs in in 11, 13 and 13 and suddenly go into that first break a setup. You wouldn't expect them to, but they could. They have enough game that they can wheel three legs off right like that. And I don't know if right now I trust Michael Smith to be able to to lift his game to get himself back into a match if he finds himself behind. He could. He could prove me wrong. He could go out and average 106. He also could be the one that throws in that 11, 13, and 13 um, in the first set and is clean sailing from there. But especially over a shorter format, he's vulnerable. The one thing that works in his favor, though, although it could also work against, but the thing that more than anything works in his favor is that those two players are the only ones that are going to have to play twice on the same night. They play that first match, then they sit back for a couple hours, and then they play again. Doing that, especially with a kind of big break in between, might not be the easiest thing to do. And we've seen the defending world champion a couple times over the last few years maybe find themselves in trouble early because their opponent came in with that sharpness from having a match. But as it weared on, as it got later, they tired and the world champion came back. I remember uh, Gurren Price a couple years ago against Richie Headhouse being an example of that. And that's the thing that might work in his favor. What will Doitz or Bunts have left? But those, whoever wins that match will be a tricky customer. Beyond that, I, I think the draw, and we'll come to this in the next question, what's the toughest quarter, is a little bit more favorable to Michael Smith than it could have been if he was in another quarter. You look at the seeds in this quarter, Matters Rosma, the potential third round tie, not, not a guarantee, both uh, Mike Decker and Jakud and Horvath could beat him, but he's not had the best year. Didn't qualify the Players' Championship Finals. Played the match of his life against MVG in the European Championship, but that's really the only thing we've seen of him in the last couple months. And he probably didn't really deserve to qualify for anything else either. It's been a bad year for him, but maybe he'll take that match against MVG to show that he has a game that he can bring on the big stage. Ross Smith's been playing all right as of late. Chris Doby's been playing well. Rob Cross has been really hot. But the other seeds in this corner, especially Jose DeSalsa and Johnny Clayton, have not. They've been struggling of late, at least compared to what they've done in the past. And Christoph Ratajski has been inconsistent. It's a favorable quarter of the draw for Michael Smith to be in. But right now, with that inconsistency in his game, just not sure where it is. I'm not going to pick him to go past the fourth round. I'm not going to say whether it's Ross Smith or Chris Doby. Uh, but both of them right now are playing just a little bit better than Michael Smith at least more consistently, especially in the big matches. Um, so I'm going to go fourth round for the world number one and world champion. I think it'll be an early exit for him, but maybe that'll be what he needs to pick back up next year and uh, try to pick up some more hardware in 2024. We're not quite sure what Michael Smith we're going to get at the moment. You think back to that last time that we saw him 
on our screens the players championship finals uh, an 85 average but also in that game missing double 12 for a nine data so it, it's really difficult to gauge where Michael Smith is coming into this tournament but in terms of defending this title it, it's something that as far as the, the PDC World Championship we have only seen three players do it in the past Phil Taylor a lot of times and then Adrian Lewis and Gary Anderson but Gary Anderson the last of those players to do it in 2016 since then five different winners in the last seven years so recent history would suggest that that Michael Smith won't defend this title over these next four weeks you mentioned as well about having to dig deep at times as well in this tournament that is something that Michael Smith did this time 12 months ago I think back to the game against Martin Schindler I think it was the last 32 three one down in sets coming back to win that one four three and then the quarterfinals against Stephen Bunting, where he had that big lead 4-1. Stephen Bunting pulling it back to 4-3 and then getting over the line to win it 5-3. So uh, a lot of people, when they think back to last year's World Championship, quite rightly, I guess, is going to be about the greatest leg ever, that nine data in the final and beating Michael Van Gerwen to win the title. But at times, he did have to dig deep to, to get over the line in games. And I don't think he's going to have things his own way this year either. And OK, it is a more favourable section of the draw but there is still some some danger in there I look at the likes of Ross Smith and, and Chris Doby players that you mentioned there players that he could come up against in the last 16 and then the quarterfinals Rob Cross is is someone that jumps off the page there as a possible threat to Michael Smith's title defence but I also look at that opening night as well and since that jump to 96 players for this tournament we have had as is tradition now the player who wins that first game of the night in the first round, they do have to then come back later on in the evening to to face the defending champion. And and so far, it's been a, a win for the defending champion each time. And it's not been plain sailing. It's not been 3-0 every single time. As, as you mentioned, the, the going price game with Richie Edhouse a couple of years ago, I think it was Rob Cross and, and Jeffrey Desvan. That one went four sets as well. There were some hairy moments in there, but... I do think it's a a tough ask for whoever gets through that first game, whether it is Kevin, whether it is Stowe. They are both debutants in this field to to come through that first game. It's going to be a a huge task to then bring themselves back down from that high and then to go again a a few hours later. And okay, they're both used to playing multiple games in a day, whether that be in Kevin's case with the Pro Tours or, or Stowe with the CDC events, the Continental Cup, which he won to get to the Grand Slam last month. But this is another level opening up the world championships, the biggest tournament there is. And then to then play later on in the night against the world number one. I, I do like the fact we get to see the holder in action in that first session. But at the same time, I think in this instance, they do have that advantage of, of not having to play a, a game earlier on in the day. So I think Michael Smith will avoid that banana skin on that opening night. I do think he will get past whoever it is in, in the third round, whether it is Mike the Decker, Dragutin, all that, or Madis Rasma. But I'm going to agree with you. I, I think that his run does come to an end in the last 16. It'll either be against Ross Smith or Chris Doby. And I don't want to give away all my picks before next week when we make our predictions who's going to win the tournament. But I think Bully Boy's defence will end in that last 16. And you're going to find out who by next week.